Big thanks to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. Whether you're looking for storage, memory, or mobile accessories, Team Group's got you covered. With a large selection of high-performance products and completely unique design choices, you won't have trouble finding what fits your style. To learn more, check out the link in the description below. For the last 10 years, I had used NVIDIA graphics cards only. In 2013, I built myself a PC with a GTX 760, then I moved to a 970, 1070, and finally to an RTX 2070. And for quite some time, I had been thinking of switching to a Radeon GPU. The reason for that was simply because I like to try new things, I just wanted to experience the other side of the fence, so about a couple of months ago, I bought this. This is an XFX Radeon RX 6600 XT that I got for $230, and there are a couple of reasons why I went for it. First, I was looking for something that would perform about the same as my RTX 2070 in games, and according to reviews online, the Radeon GPU can be equal or better than the 2070, and second, you can get both of these graphics cards for about the same price on the used market. So basically, I didn't want to switch to something significantly better or worse than the 2070, which would be unfair and affect the conclusion. Now, keep in mind that this is not a detailed comparison, so we're not going to be looking at the performance difference of these two graphics cards in 20 different games with ray tracing on and off. That's something we will perhaps look into in the next video. For now, I would simply like to share my experience with a Radeon GPU as someone who had been using NVIDIA for the last decade, let you know if you can have a similar or maybe even an overall better experience, if there are any issues that I faced, and if it is possible for someone like me to keep using an AMD GPU without the need of switching back to NVIDIA. I'll be honest, I always found the Radeon design overall to be really cool. I love the Radeon naming, I think the graphics card designs, software, etc. All of it looks great, and this XFX card is no exception. It is definitely one of my favorite GPU designs, which is also one of the reasons I decided to go for it. Performance side of things is great. Given you have a fast enough CPU, this thing is capable of running pretty much any recent game out there using high settings at 1080p. In fact, I even get CPU bound in some titles with my second gen Ryzen 5, because of which I will be upgrading to a better CPU for the comparison. I haven't really tested this card at 1440p yet, given the fact it performs very well at 1080p, I'm confident you won't have any issues at 2K. Depending on the game, you might need to lower the graphics settings, Yet, for the most part, you should have no problem running even the most intensive games at that resolution. After playing a few games, I gotta say I did notice the Radeon GPU performing better than the 2070 in some titles, which is impressive given the fact you can find the Radeon card for a bit cheaper on the used market. Now, you could say that these two GPUs don't compete with each other. The 2070 release towards the end of 2018 while the 6600 XT released three years after that. And you'd be right, the direct competitor of the 6600 XT is the RTX 3060. But the thing is, the 3060 performs exactly like the 2070, and the Radeon card is cheaper than both, so I wouldn't say that it's an unfair comparison. By the way, here's a quick look at temps, and as you can see, this thing doesn't overheat easily. You have to really try to make this thing throttle, which is another thing that I'm impressed about, given the relatively compact size of this card. When it comes to features, there are plenty of them. Personally, I mostly care about raw performance, but if you're one of those people who like to use things such as FSR, anti-lag, etc., you have it all here, and according to recent reviews, these features are basically on par with what NVIDIA has to offer. One thing that I used often with an NVIDIA card is Shadowplay to record gameplay footage, which is also a feature that we're getting with AMD software. 
Now, I know nothing about the performance hit and how much worse the quality of the footage is with AMD. Once again, that's something we're going to be extensively checking out in the upcoming comparison. But so far, the footage looks pretty good, and I had no issues using the instant replay feature to record the gameplay. In case you're wondering, here are my adrenaline settings, and while at it, I'd like to mention how much I like this software. You have absolutely everything you need here, unlike Nvidia where you have a control panel and GeForce Experience which are separate, not to mention you need to create an account to use GeForce Experience and Shadowplay, so in my opinion, AMD did a better job here. Alright, so now I'd like to mention a couple of issues that I experienced while using the 6600 XT. First one isn't really a big deal, but it is something that I didn't know about. When I first launched Apex Legends after installing the Radeon card, the game had very noticeable stuttering even after disabling all of the unnecessary features in the software. Thinking that perhaps I screwed up while installing the drivers, what I decided to do was reinstall everything, hoping it would fix the problem. Yet, it turns out the stuttering is normal when you launch a game for the first time, or at least when you launch Apex for the first time, because I don't remember the stuttering being this bad in other titles that I played. Basically, these stutters are a result of shader caching. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes for them to go away after you launch and play a game like Apex for the first time, and I want to make sure everyone understands this clearly. It only happens once, and it's normal. With that said, I don't remember something like that ever happening to me with an NVIDIA GPU, at least not to the same extent, but again, since it's a one-time thing, it really is not that big of a deal. I will even swap to the RTX 2070 once I'm done with the recording to check for stuttering, because it could totally be a result of an update. The second issue is the latest driver version number 22.11.2. You might have heard of this if you watch Jay's Two Cents or if you're using a Radeon card, but if you haven't, basically this driver version seems to be a bit problematic and causes crashes, black screens, etc. Now, I don't know if these driver issues are something that happen too often. Like I said, I've been using this card for only a couple of months, but thankfully rolling back to version 22.11.1 fixed the problem, so it's something else to be aware of. As a PC user, I believe it is important to know how to properly uninstall and reinstall GPU drivers regardless of which graphics card you use, because even with NVIDIA GPUs, I did experience performance drops a few times after a driver update, though of course, like I said, I don't know whether such issues happen more often or not with AMD's drivers. I guess that's something I will learn with time. In a situation like that, wiping the driver entirely using DDU in safe mode and reinstalling it, or installing a more stable version, which is what I did, should fix the problem. I gotta say, I expected to have more issues with a Radeon card because of the amount of negative comments that I've seen on the internet, and heard from people, but so far I really couldn't be happier with the performance of this thing. In fact, it is good to the point I don't mind not switching back to my RTX 2070. There are a few advantages that the 2070 has though, or should I say Nvidia in general has over AMD that are worth mentioning, which are better ray tracing performance, better performance in most productivity tasks, and, of course, better recording and streaming quality thanks to the NVENC encoder, all three of which are something we're going to have a look at in the upcoming comparison. In my case, I don't really care about those advantages, so if you're like me, you're not really making a compromise by getting a Radeon GPU unlike some might say. In fact, there are a few more advantages that you're getting by going AMD, which are performance improvements that happen over time thanks to driver optimizations, or the way AMD likes to call it, fine wine, better performance with low to mid-range processors in CP-intensive titles thanks to the lower driver overhead, 
and finally, better value. So you're getting similar or better performance at a lower price than Nvidia. I believe Radeon cards are a great alternative and I could easily see myself recommending getting one depending on your use case. Either way, that's been it. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to let me know your experience using Radeon GPUs in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.